Hello everyone, my name is Terry Cal. I'm an online student working on a solo project and I will be presenting traffic sign detection using faster RCNN in YOLO version 3. Autonomous dri driving vehicles is a very active area of research and development today. For autonomous driving vehicles to be able to negotiate a road correctly, it needs to have the ability to detect relevant objects on the road. One very important capability is the proper detection of traffic signs from images of natural outdoor scenes that are captured by an onboard sensor. Now, this capability poses a lot of uh, challenges. The images captured um, could be captured under varying lighting conditions as well as weather conditions. The traffic signs themselves can be partially occluded and in general, traffic signs are relatively small in size in comparison to other objects that we'll find on the road. So together, this provides strong motivation to develop good machine learning models that can detect tra traffic signs. Now, my project's problem statement can be summed as follows. Given an image of an outdoor natural scene on a USA road, build a model to predict all traffic signs of a particular category that are present in an image returning both the bounding box and location coordinates within the image for each detected traffic sign object. Now the approach for my project is as follows. I will apply transfer learning using two different state-of-the-art pre-trained models, faster RCNN and YOLO V3, fine-tuned with the LISA traffic sign data set. The data set will be split into a 55, 35, 10% training test validation partition. And we'll leverage HyperOp to perform model search against these two algorithms using uh, appropriate hyperparameters for each. Now, the LISA traffic sign data set is produced by the Laboratory for Intelligent and Safe Automobiles at the University of California at San Diego. This data set is composed of 6,610 still images captured on USA roads containing a total of 7,855 traffic signs that are categorized into 47 distinct classes. Now for the performance metric that I'll be using to measure um, the performance of YOLO V3 versus uh, faster RCNN, I'll be using an F1 score. And just to note, we'll be using IOU, or intersection over union, with a threshold value of 0 0.5 to determine if a predicted a bounding box actually matches the ground truth bounding box um, within an image of a traffic sign. And then we use the metrics of true positive, false positives, and false negatives based upon the IOU threshold of 0 0.5 um, to actually calculate precision and recall. Now just to note, um, if you don't know what's the difference between precision and recall, precision and recall are both measurements of accuracy. So how many true positives um, you actually detected um, within the image. But for precision, you're penalized um, if you make a lot of false positive predictions. In other words, you predict um, bounding boxes which actually do not contain any traffic signs. And if you do too many of that, then your precision falls to zero, even if you properly detected um, all of the traffic signs correctly. And then likewise, recall is also a measurement of accuracy, but you're penalized for missing traffic signs that you should have detected uh, or should have been detected by the model. And then precision and recall is combined together to produce one F1 score, which is normalized to zero to one, uh, where one is a perfect score and zero is the worst possible score. Now, for related work, um, I previously built traffic sign object detector using a method called HOG plus SVM. Um, essentially, what this means is um, we extracted histogram of oriented gradient feature vectors out of uh, patches of an image that contains a traffic sign and fed that into an SVM as positive um, training cases. And then we also extracted out negative um, sample patches that did not contain traffic signs as negative cases. And we basically trained a linear binary SVM 
to basically classify if an image patch that you send in contains a traffic sign or not. However, um, this part, particular type of model um, was plagued by very slow performance. Detections in general took anywhere between 30 seconds up to a minute. Um, large part of this is due to the use of either selective search or brute force sliding windows approach. Now, for homework two, I actually worked on a traffic sign object detector as part of the computer vision track, but I used a much simpler uh, data set, specifically GTSDB, or German Traffic Sign um, Detection Benchmark, uh, which actually only had 900 images uh, compared to LISA. Um, and in addition, I wanted to expand upon that work and compare against uh, the performance of faster RCNN with another state-of-the-art um, object detection um, algorithm, specifically YOLO v3. All right, let's go ahead and quickly explore the data set. So here's a few sample images of what you will see from Lisa. So on the left-hand side, you see stop signs. Right-hand side here, um, you see the speed limit 35 and 30, respectively. Now, this is a breakdown of the traffic sign class types within the Lisa data set. Um, so as you can see here, the stop sign um, has the most number of samples, uh, whereas on the right-hand side here, these are samples that uh, basically um, was less than 50. So one of the strategies I used was I filtered out um, any samples where the number of classes was actually less than 50. Because um, I felt that if it was less than 50, then this would result in too little uh, samples uh, for splitting into training, validation, and testing, and would basically hurt the overall um, um, performance of the model. And so in the end, uh, by doing this filtering, um, this will represent 19 distinct classes, target classes that uh, the model will try to train on and detect. So current project status. Um, at this point, I've completed the coding for faster RCNN. Uh, model search is currently underway and should be finished by the time this presentation is viewed. Um, I've completed the training script for YOLO v3 and managed to do uh, testing and actually produce one single model um, trained with 100 epochs. Um, I'm actually in the process of integrating this into Hyperopt uh, to start model search uh, using YOLO v3. Um, I am a bit behind schedule for YOLO v3, but hopefully we'll try to make up some extra time with the extra freed up GPU I have at home that's currently reserved for faster RCNN. So I have two GPUs working on YOLO v3 um, and, and, and try to get the um, same number of trials as faster RCNN. Um, and for today, I'll be able to show preliminary results for faster RCNN, as well as some analysis and some early results of YOLO v3. So um, this here shows the top 10 performing models uh, for faster RCNN. Um, basically, uh, this here is a pandas data frame, which I've sorted by the test partition F1 score. And as you can see here, um, the best model that I've produced so far had an F1 score of 0 0.47, which isn't the greatest, um, but you know it has potential. It's not, not that bad. Um, you'll note that um, for each of these trials, I've only actually um, trained for 25 epochs. So this is uh, by design. Uh, basically, each trial um, takes about four hours. Each epoch took about 10 minutes, basically. And so um, in order to get a good sample of trials by Hyperop, um, I basically limited the max epochs to 25. Um, the hope here is that by finding the best parameters here, hyperparameter momentum, weight decay, as well as learning rate, I'll be able to use this and retrain the same model using the same best hyperparameters, uh, but then increase the number of epochs to say 100. And then hopefully the test F1 score uh, will be much better than 0 0.47. Now this here is a, um, shows the training history uh, for the best faster RCNN model, the one with the 0 0.47 um, test F1 score. Um, so as you can see here, uh, this here shows training loss curve. So this looks like a perfect textbook uh, curve here as the epochs increased um, in, in the um, x-axis, um, the loss actually decreases uh, incrementally. Now, um, 
here's the validation F1 score. As you can see here, it's, it increases, but it's starting to plateau. But to note, we see that the validation um, scores and the training loss has not converged yet. So this to me does mean there's hope that with additional um, tr uh, epochs of training, um, this will be able to converge and intersect, and I'll be able to pull up the F1 score with uh, additional training time. So um, what does the faster RCNN model know? This here is a breakdown um, of F1 score by class type. So as we can see here, um, this model knows how to detect stop signs very well. It does a very decent job with merge, stop ahead, yield, school speed limit 25, and speed limit 35. But in contrast, it does not seem to be able to detect speed limit 65, 45, or keep right at all. So um, as a point of interest, I included um, the class count breakdown uh, on the right here. So as you can see, stop sign with the best F1 score did indeed have the most amount of samples. But in contrast, keep right, which had a zero F1 score, it, it actually um, had about uh, 300 um, samples or so. So um, there doesn't seem to be an exact direct correlation between bad performance uh, for a class and then the number of available samples for that class. Uh, finally, this shows the significant hyperparameters for faster RCNN, momentum, learning rate, as well as weight decay. The one interesting observation I have here is that as the um, hyperop uh, guided search using TPE progressed through the number of trials, it didn't seem to really converge, at least um, compared to what I saw with um, homework assignment three. Now, um, the theory here is that for um, hyper-op guided search using neural networks, um, I'm basically not able to get as many trial runs. So, so far, we're, we're looking at 45 samples here. So it hasn't warmed up enough to kind of learn the trends yet. Uh, versus in homework three, um, I was able to train, at least for one of my data sets, up to a thousand different models. And so that seemed to converge very well later on. Um, and then finally, here's the preliminary results for YOLO V3, um, which I've trained one single model uh, with 100 epochs. And uh, the best performing model had a mean average precision of 0 0.18, which is equivalent to like an F1 score. Um, the interesting thing to note here is that uh, for keep right, um, YOLO actually had an average precision of 0 0.4. Now, this is interesting because if we compare and contrast this with the uh, faster RCNN model, um, it actually did not know how to detect uh, keep right at all. All right, next steps. So I'm going to complete a model search for faster RCNN. Um, at this point, uh, model search for YOLO v3 should have already com commenced for a few days by the time you see this presentation. I am a bit behind uh, schedule on YOLO v3 though, but I am hoping to make up some time with freed up GPU. And then um, finally, I'll need to do some training on the best models using the best found hyperparameters uh, from Hyperopt, uh, but using a lot more uh, epochs of training, and collect the results and then produce the final report. So for future work, um, I would like to probably train, uh, shrink the training data set to get more trials out of model search. Uh, basically, four hours per model is just too time consuming unless I have like a, a, a huge cluster of GPUs. Um, I also want to evaluate single shot detector as another state of the art algorithm. This originally was in my scope uh, but due to time constraints, I couldn't get to uh, work on this in, in this particular project and had to drop that. And then finally do some experimentation with uh, data augmentation. So that's it. Um, just note, I am an online student and unfortunately I won't be available uh, for Q&A during class time. However, um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them and I will get them answered in Piazza. And I just want to say thanks in advance for any feedback and suggestions. Have a great day, everyone.